I welcome that recognition again to the Garfield honorees. And globally, I am wearing the ring of Bishop Francis Garfield, the first bishop of our diocese. So this ring is 159 years old. I've often wondered, it's amazing that it survived 159 years to pass from one bishop to the next. Because from what I can ascertain, not every bishop necessarily wore it, perhaps didn't fit him. And it's a beautiful ring. But it symbolizes what we're doing here this morning in honoring you as part of the diocese. As we are aware, Bishop Garton died of the yellow fever in ministering to his people. He was only four years a bishop. He was 49 years of age. And so on this feast of the liturgical year of Christ the King, the culmination of this year, in a way it's the end of the beginning, but as the cliche says, it's also the beginning of the end. When we look at this feast and how it's contextualized within the life of the Church, we are dealing with all, con all aspects of the life of Jesus. As we celebrate them throughout the year, and the culmination is the acclamation that Christ is King, not in the political sense, but in the sense of the Spirit. As the Gospel says, He is the King of the truth and the proclamation thereof. We celebrate them in the present moment. We can, if we wish, reflect on the past year. And we can ask ourselves the very pertinent question, does God reign in our hearts? Because that is what God in the person of Jesus wishes us to be. Persons who are in love with the Savior, in love with Jesus and his call to holiness. And so we celebrate the coming of Christ. The coming of Christ not only at that first Christmas in Bethlehem of Judea, but we also celebrate and make ready for the coming of Christ at the end of time. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. There is a story told of an Olympic skater, very, very good skater, and in the Olympics, he went up through the various qualification rounds, and having completed and won in the semi-final rounds to be admitted to the final rounds between maybe perhaps seven or eight other skaters. He was in conversation during practice time with one of the persons who was to be a judge. And the judge indicated to this skater, I noticed that you always wear a cross when you're skating in your competitions. My advice would be that you should perhaps not wear it because it's listened that you're skating and can be a type of a distraction to the judges. So he thought about this and recognized that he had worn this cross during all of his skating career ever since he was even a young child. It was a cross that symbolized Christ. So he decided that he would wear it, that he would continue to wear it. And in the finals, when they were over and he skated brilliantly, four of the judges gave him a perfect ten. And the fifth judge, would advise them not to wear the cross, give them a 9.5 or something in that category. As a result of which, he did not win the gold, he won the bronze. 